Hello friends, this is Raj Sastri from Raj Option Trading. Today is February 3rd, 2022. Let's do a quick stock analysis on digital turbine, innovative industrial properties, Virgin Orbit, and uh, uh, Big Bear AI. So with that, we'll do analysis and also rank these stocks. If you have to buy one or two, what should you buy? So with that, let's jump in. <clears throat> As you see here, we've got uh, great companies. Digital Turbine, it's one of the good companies. Stock is, has pulled back. It's a good time to buy. We got Innovative Properties, which is, which is into Cannabis. I think it's also a good one. We'll look into a little more details. We got Big Bear AI. It's into Artificial Intelligence and Data, uh, Big Data. And then we got Virgin Orbit here. Uh, they're trying to launch uh, satellites. It's also a good one. So let's uh, look at these companies in a little more detail and do a quick analysis. <clears throat> so let's uh, look at the companies in a little more details. As you see here, we got the Digital Turbine at the top here. It's a mobile software company. Um, their uh, earnings is coming up in February. Uh, if the stock does well, um, I can see the stock going higher. There's expectation this stock is going to go do well. We'll uh, keep a close watch on this and also do a quick analysis. And then you've got Virgin Orbit Holdings, Richard Branson's company. It's a responsive launch and space solutions company. There are a lot of space companies. And this one looks like they've won a um, uh, $300 million NASA contract here. So that's a good one here. And they also add a distinguished space uh, flight engineering executive. That's also a good one here. And then you've got Innovative Industrial Properties, which is again a self-advised Maryland corporation. They're into uh, properties around regulated medical use of cannabis. And it's one of the unstoppable stock for Motley Fool. And then you've got Big Bear AI. They're into artificial intelligence and machine learning, data science. This is a new cutting edge uh, area. There are a lot of development going on here. This company is positioned well to take advantage. So let's go into some more detail. So first, let's look at Digital Turbine. As you see here, Digital Turbine, you know, they're into uh, they're a leading independent uh, growth and monetization platform. A lot of these mobile operators, they use a Digital Turbine to really make sure they get the ad revenue. So it's one of the great companies. Stock has been stalling. Let's see if it's worth buying here. So as you look through the technical analysis here, Look, uh, Digital Turbine, it's a one-year chart. Stock has been uh, trading sideways, as you can see here. It's uh, kind of in a trading pattern here, or a you know quick uh, compression zone here. And right now, it's trying to go higher. Look, uh, it's trying to go higher. Earnings is coming up pretty soon. So as you see here, uh, you know, stock is uh, stalling. Last earning, stock came down pretty heavily. Now it's trying to go higher slowly. So if the earnings, if they can do in line or little better, you can see the stock going higher. Um, look, you know, we have the same pattern here came down before the earnings, after the earnings is went higher. So you could expect the same type of situation. Stock has been stalling before the earnings pretty heavily, and now it's trying to go higher. You can expect something similar if uh, this, uh, you know, provides a little bit better guidance here. There's a chance that this can rocket higher. And as you see here from a uh, from a um, uh, RSI perspective uh, or a momentum perspective, momentum is going higher, higher slowly. That's a good one here. Even up here, RSI is very low, just 41 here. It's a good to buy here. And look from a uh, DMI perspective, the blue line wants to go higher, the red line wants to go lower, and this can create a uh, bullish uh, crossover. The moment blue line crosses over red, that's a bullish crossover, that will be a good one. From an implied volatility perspective, right now implied vol is uh, 80, IV rank is 80 as you can see here. That tells you, even up here, if you want to sell some put options under the stock price, you could do it. You could you will get some good revenue, especially because earnings is around the corner. And then you got volume here uh, on the balance volume that wants to go higher. That tells you at these levels there are more buyers. And smart money perspective, smart money has been flowing into the stock. Now it's cooling off, as you can see here. 
probably because earnings is coming up, folks are a little bit, uh, you know, trying to think through what to do here. So with that, from a technical analysis perspective, I see a stock gaining momentum by looking at RSI. I see from a DMI perspective, there is a bullishness here. The blue line wants to cross over red line, not quite in maybe a couple of days here. And also smart money is flowing into the stock. So that's why it's a good one here. Now let's look at the fundamentals. From a fundamental perspective, this is an eye chart. We'll look at a few quick things here. We'll not uh, go through all of them. So it's a uh, IPO back in 2016, as uh, 2006, as you can see here. And, uh, you know, they are down 57% from 52-week high. It's a, it has a strong buy recommendation from analysts, as you can see here. And, uh, uh, and if there's a short ratio here. People are uh, shorting this one, 4.58. That's not too much. Uh, that could be a small short squeeze, but don't expect too big short squeeze. In the options market, folks are buying more and more call options. That's why put call ratio is 0.44. That tells you more call buyers than put, put buyers. And volume is picking up. Look at the relative volume. It's uh, more than 1.2%, um, more than the normal three-month volume here. And this is a high beta stock, as you see here. Um, Wall Street sometimes does not like high beta stocks. What this tells you is really this goes 2.42 times higher or lower compared to S&P 500. As an example, if S&P 500 does 1% higher, this will do 2.42% higher. If it goes 1% lower, this one will go lower by 2.42%. That's the beta here, high beta stock. Sometimes folks, uh, you know, folks who want to uh, go after uh, secular growth, they'll, they'll be going after high beta. So that's why it's a high beta name here. And then you've got margin here. As you see from a margin perspective, uh, this company, <clears throat> net margin positive, company is making money. This is not a money loser. Look at the year-over-year -year sales growth. Nice sales growth here. They're doing well from a growth perspective. Even five-year sales growth in the past five years, they've done well. EBITDA margin positive, that tells you it's a good one here. And from a PE ratio perspective, it's high. But for these type of stocks, I would uh, recommend looking at the price to sales ratio. Look, that's not too much here. You could uh, still buy here. And some folks look at the price to PEG ratio for these type of stocks. It's also pretty healthy here. You could uh, look at this one also from a price to earning growth perspective. And from a next year perspective, uh, Earnings per share is expected to grow. So analysts are expecting good things for this company. That's why earnings per growth for this year is high and earnings per share for next year is also high. And as you look through here from a financial perspective, a look, um, uh, total debt to equity ratio is below, below uh, one here. That tells you they do have financial wherewithal for the long term. And for the short term here, I think uh, they have to... Uh, improve the situation here. Quick ratio and also current ratio is 0.5 here. Current ratio 0.5 means, uh, you know, they have got more liabilities than assets to pay the short-term liabilities. I like the current ratio to be above one. This tells you they got uh, uh, more liabilities than the assets in the short run. That's why this is 0.5, which is uh, not good. I mean, they have to improve the, they have to improve the assets and reduce the liabilities. And then from a debt perspective, as you can see at 257, and they got a cash of 96. I think they have to improve this situation also a little bit here. And it's a free cash flow positive company. I like such companies here. And as we look through here, they got a nice return on equity as well as return on asset. That's a good one. I like double digits. This company doing it here. And from a performance perspective, as you see here, this is struggling a little bit. Look, one day negative. Um, and you know, five days positive is getting momentum in the sh shorter term. That's also a good here. 10 day, uh, trying to go over 10 day here. It's a slightly bullish in 10 day. That's good. But look longer term here, one month negative, three month negative, six months negative, one year negative. By looking at this, what you make out is really, even though it's uh, struggled in the long run, in the short run, there's a momentum. If this company gives a good earnings, um, this stock can go higher. 
And from a technical grade perspective right now, a low RSI as you can see here, just 42. You can buy it here. IV percentile is high. You could sell some put option under the stock price, make some money that way. And stock is, uh, you know, bounces uh, nicely. It goes up and down by about $3 as you can see here. And then you got, um, you know, then then we have financial grade, as you can see here, from a financial grade perspective, from Morningstar, it gets a C grade for, for financial, A grade for growth, that's very good here, it's a growth company. And look, uh, from a Piotrowski F score perspective, it's two, that tells you the book books have to improve. You know, by looking at their quick ratio and their current ratios, you can make out they have to improve their situation here i like this to be above one that's why uh piotrowski f score is two i like this to be more than five right now it's at two which is not great but um, we will see if it if it can improve it here you know they do have money here it's not going to go bankrupt nice altman z score about two i like it and from a valuation rank perspective you know when compared to industry it's uh, doing okay relatively low valuation Profitability is still F for Morningstar, they would improve the situation, and it's a growth stock here. It's uh, growing nicely, uh, ranked two in the industry, that's great here. And profitability is also not super, it's, it's okay, uh, doing pretty okay in the industry, uh, which, is, uh, which is also good here. <clears throat> so with that, what we'll do is we'll look at uh, how the numbers are for this company. I always like to look at the numbers in past couple quarters and past couple of years. As you look through the numbers here, look, um, I like this year, earnings per share growing nicely year over year. That's a plus positive for this company. I like it. Sales is also improving. That's also great here. Shares outstanding, improving, increasing slowly here. <clears throat> I'm okay with the slow increase here. Uh, you know, ideally, shares outstanding should be decreasing, but a slow increase with the nice revenue increase is okay, not too bad here. Quarterly earnings going nicely. I like it. R&D, they're putting money on R&D to differentiate themselves. I like the companies putting money on R&D. And from quarterly net income perspective, this is what they have to improve. Look, um, they were positive quarterly net income. Uh, in the last quarter ended 9.30. Uh, it became negative. That's why Wall Street did not like it. If they can improve this situation here, the stock can go higher. So with that, uh, let's jump in here and look at the next company. Next company is Innovative Properties, IIPR. As you can see here, this is a leading uh, provider of real estate uh, capital for regulated cannabis industry. As you all know, cannabis has been struggling off late. That's why this company is also struggling. Um, let's see if it's a good time to buy some IIPR. <clears throat> look from a fundamental, from a technical perspective. Uh, look, uh, stock has been struggling. It's uh, down, as you can see here, along with the cannabis. Cannabis as a whole, it's down. Look, last earnings here, stock uh, went higher slightly, then came down. Now it's showing some strength, as you can see here. There is some momentum indicated by RSI. Also, it's also going higher. And it's, it also has a relatively high IV percentile, which tells you if you want, you could uh, you could uh, sell some put option below the stock price, make some money that way. And from a DMI perspective, blue line wants to go higher, red line wants to come down. That tells you um, this can also create a bullish crossover as you go forward. And from a on the balance volume perspective, pretty steady here. It wants to go higher. There are more buyers than sellers. And also check in money flow tells you smart money also wants to, it's also going into the stock here slowly. That's why from a technical perspective at this level, you know, it's a go and you could uh, buy slowly and go from there. And now let's look at the fundamentals and market snapshot here. As you look through here, in your properties, uh, stock uh, became IPO back in 2016. It's uh, there for a while here. Strong buy from analysts here. That's a great one here. And look, it's got a, some short ratio, not too much. I would not expect a huge short squeeze here. From a put call ratio perspective, options market is telling you there are more call buyers than put buyers. There are also some put buyers. I've seen this uh, put call ratio well below 50 for some companies. Here, this tells you folks are a little cautious. They're buying call options more, but they're also buying some put option. Target price, as you see here, nice uh, target price here, 
282. Current stock price is 197. That tells you analysts are, uh, you know, having a high target price for this one. This is also a high beta stock here that tells you this can uh, move 1.6% higher or lower compared to S&P 500. Um, and volume is tad low, as you can see here. It's uh, just 230,000, which is uh, not too much, which is, uh, you know, okay for this company here. <clears throat> From a sales perspective, as you see here, nice sales growth quarter over quarter. That's good here. And year over year sales growth is also great. And they got nice five-year sales growth, which is also good here. And this company is a money-making company. Nice 57.4% uh, um, margin here. That's a great one here. And from a uh, price to sales perspective, this company is a little expensive as you see here, a uh, little high price to sales ratio. That's one of the reasons Wall Street does not like this company. I think uh, we'll see how it goes. It does uh, well long term. <clears throat> and then as you see here, from a quick ratio perspective, uh, total debt to equity ratio 0 0.30 long term, which is, which is very good, well below one. Company has got uh, enough capital here. And they got nice cash, as you can see here, 127 million, and debt is 432, which is uh, not too bad for a real estate type company here. <clears throat> then as you see here, from a return on equity and return on asset, it's uh, doing okay, it's positive, which is not bad here. And from a performance perspective, it's been struggling, as you see here, one day negative, and uh, it's trying to turn the corner, as you see here, five days positive, 10 days also it can become positive pretty soon as you can see here one year not much just four percent here with all the cannabis cohorts struggling this is also struggling here but look two years is done nicely 126 percent and five years also it, do, it has done nicely 1169 not too bad and as you look through here from a health grade perspective from Morningstar, nice grade. Look, it's got a B grade in financials and a B grade in growth, uh, which is which is uh, very good here. And this company does have uh, you know nice uh, uh, financial positioning here uh, with the Altman Z 5.1. Tells you it's got enough money to uh, withstand and go forward. I like this Alt Piotrowski F score here. 6 which tells you the books are improving financials are improving that's good i love when piotrowski f score is above 5 and look from a valuation perspective it's uh, you know nicely valued middle of the pack in the industry uh, you know i i like uh, valuation to be a little bit lower but middle of the pack not too bad here profitability is good i like it it's a b grade here and um, industry growth rank is two that means it's a growth uh, company here lower the better it gets two which is good here from a profit rank perspective it's a uh, uh, four below five which is good here overall uh, from a snapshot perspective it's a good company right now it's struggling as you see here it's trying to you know right now it's trying to go over its 10 day moving average and 20 day moving average even though it's uh, below its 50 and 200 day moving average. The moment, moment you see this, you can see there's a bullish crossover happening, even though it's uh, below its long-term moving averages, it's taking on its short-term moving average, which is always good. And now we look at uh, a quick number, look at how it's, it's been doing last couple of years and last couple of quarters. As you see here, we got um, annual earnings. I like it. It's going higher. So it's good here. I like the companies growing the annual earnings. Look, sales is also going nicely. I like it here. Shares outstanding is improving, uh, which is not a good sign. They are diluting the share count. That's one of the reasons stock is uh, not doing great. <clears throat> and quarterly revenue perspective, nice quarterly revenue clip here. I like it. That's uh, one of the good things about this company here. Operating expense is going slightly higher as you see here. I like this to go lower, but it's okay with the nice, uh, you know, sales here, uh, quarterly as well as annual. It's okay to have slightly higher operating expense here. From a net, net income perspective, look, they're doing it. They're doing nicely here. It's a good quarterly net income. So from a numbers perspective, company doing nicely. Um, I think it's a good one to buy. Uh, as cannabis cohort improves, this can uh, go higher. So with that, let's look at uh, Virgin Orbit here. Virgin Orbit is a Richard Branson's company. It's a premier dedicated small satellite launch service. You know, there are a lot of these space companies off late. Uh, this is one of the companies here. Let's see if it's worth buying here. 
<clears throat> as you see here, it's a new company. There's not too much history as we see here. And look, um, implied wall is increasing here. Right now, IV rank is 80. That tells you, um, you know, with the stock price $8, it's not worth selling any put option here. It tells you it's very volatile. And volume average is increasing. That tells you smart money is flowing in here. Check-in money flow is also increasing. That tells you smart money is flowing into the stock here. From a technical perspective, I see a stock which is in the trading range, as you can see here. But there is some bullishness with the both on the balance volume, volume going higher. And smart money is flowing into the stock, which is a good one here. <clears throat> and now from a quick snapshot perspective, as you can see, um, it's a IPO re recently, uh, just uh, 5 19 20, 21, as you can see here, just $8 stock. As, um, right now, there is no analyst recommendation. That's why it uh, shows false here. There, there is no recommendation right now. And um, um, as, as you can scan through here, <clears throat> volume is around 1.1 million shares traded, which is very healthy margin, uh, very healthy volume for uh, a, this type of company here. <clears throat> from a numbers perspective, there's not too many numbers here, but from a price to sales perspective, from a valuation perspective, sky high, very, very, very high price to sales ratio. That's why you gotta be careful here. And stock price right now we're at, uh, um, $8, target is $16, so um, there is a nice uh, price target uh, boost here for this company. And as we look through here from a financials perspective, uh, debt to equity ratio 0 0.40 for long term, which is not bad here. They do have money. Look, they got uh, $31 million uh, cash and $16 million in debt. And as you scan through here, numbers are not great. It's an early stage company. Free cash flow is negative, which is not great here. Uh, with the free cash flow negative and higher price to sales ratio, that's why Wall Street does not like this at this time here. And as you look through here, from a financial grade from Wall Street, it gets a D grade in the financials. And uh, not too many numbers for this company, still early stage company here. And from a Moving average perspective, from a moving average perspective itself, uh, look, it's uh, trying to turn a corner. It's above its uh, 10 and 50 day moving average and below its 200 day moving average. It tells you there's some momentum for this stock uh, going on here. So that's why you got to look at this company, buy when it's down and uh, go from there and understand it's a high price to sales ratio, meaning high valuation. You got to be careful here. I would um, wait for this to cool off a little bit before I buy this one. So next we look at the Big Bear Holdings, BBAI. As you see here, these guys are into um, decision dominance here. They want to help you with their artificial intelligence to make your decision quickly so that they can uh, move on with their business. <clears throat> Look, from a, from a <clears throat> technical perspective, uh, nothing much here to brag. Stock has been going down big time. New IPO, as you can see here. Now we're trying to uh, consolidate and go higher. And look um, from a RSI perspective, after dropping down to oversold level, it's trying to go slightly higher, you know, completely sold off low RSI here. And implied volatility is very high, 75%, as you can see here. That's why you got to be a little careful. If you're a long-term buyer, this could be a good one. You could take advantage of this depressed price and buy some. <clears throat> and from a DMI perspective, the blue line wants to go higher. Red, red line wants to go lower. This can create a bullish crossover. That's why it's a good one to buy at these levels. Look, on the balance volume is increasing. That means... There, are, there is more buying going on here. And also check-in money is also flowing into the stock. Right now it's stand lower, but still it's a positive indication that smart money is flowing into the stock, taking advantage of uh, this depressed stock, just $5, big drop. That's what is going on here. If you're a long-term holder, if you can take some, uh, you know, take some pain in the short term, this is a good one for you. <clears throat> Now, from a snapshot perspective, as you see here, it's got a buy rating from analysts, which is good, and uh, $5 stock, which is very cheap, as you see here, and it's a down 49% from 52-week high. It's a really, really a good buy here. And look, um, as you look through here, not too many numbers. Uh, it's got nice uh, $54 million in sales, 
which is good here net margin or ebitda margin is negative that's one of the reason wall street does not like it early stage company they got nice growth projection for uh, eps earnings per share growth projection for next year that tells you analysts are really bullish on this company here and return on asset uh, is uh, nice here 105 uh, from a quick ratio and current ratio perspective look um, they do have um, it's below one that tells you they have money to meet the short term obligations uh, they they are liquid that way but long term they got um, you know they, they have a little bit higher debt to equity ratio that tells you long term you got to be a little careful it's a little high for me but um, manageable they got 11 million dollar in cash and 108 million dollar in uh, debt here we have to watch this situation but right now they are solvent they do have enough money to meet short-term obligations i like the current ratio to be below one this is 0 0.6 and as you see here from a performance perspective stock has been down for five days but in the 10 day time frame it's positive and for one month it's squarely negative as you see here and from a technical and grading perspective, this does not get a high grade. Look, it's get a D grade for, for, for uh, finance and uh, not too many grades because it's an early stage company, but they do have good good amount of money. Company solvent, Altman Z score is 3.3, which tells you it's a, it's a good one here. Institutions are buying this company. That's a good one here. Um, institutions are buying. And uh, um, as you scan through here, um, insiders they're not doing much here which is okay but institutions institutions are buying that's a good sign here so with that uh, i say it's a good one if you're a speculator uh, if you want to buy some you can buy at these depressed levels and go from there <clears throat> with that next we'll do a quick comparison and see which one if you are to buy one or two what you can buy here look we got here uh, digital turbine innovative industrial properties virgin orbit and uh, big bear ai and as you look through here um, all many of these are strong buy apps and uh, iip are strong buy uh, virgin orbit no rating right now and bbai is also buy look all these names are down big time from 52 week high they are squarely in the correction territory they have revenue as you see here with the exception of uh, vivo um, virgin orbit every, all these stocks have got double digit or a triple digit revenue and year over year growth is nice from app for apps and digital turbine as you see here and gross margin is also good companies are making money look net margin is positive for both apps as well as iipr and as you scan through here from a valuation perspective, apps valuation is very low here, digital turbine low valuation, but IIPR has got a high valuation and so is uh, uh, Vivo RB. BBAI is good on the valuation, not, not bad at all. And from a return perspective, look uh, from a five year return perspective, both apps and IIPR have done very nicely. <clears throat> so with that, from a grading perspective, all these companies are solvent they got solid money here that's why financials from a altman z score is uh, squarely about two that's also great here from a books perspective uh, look iipr is doing great here it's got a uh, solid uh, improvement in its uh, financials and books that's why piotrowski f score is six that tells you this is a very good company they're improving their situation financial situation and look from a Morningstar perspective, we got here uh, apps uh, getting nice C grade here in financials. But look, solid companies IIPR. I would rank IIPR to be number one. If you are to choose one of one or two of these, I would go with IIPR first, and then then I would go with apps, which is uh, again 73 overall rating, which is also a good one here. <clears throat> and if you're a speculator, then you could look at uh, Vivo RB and bbai but by looking at uh, what happened with the richard branson and the f uh, what can happen in the future if i were you i would uh, first you know go with the bbai here a lot of promise with the artificial intelligence with a little higher score which is 15 and um, bottom most rank is for a vivo rb if you're a speculator if you want to put some money into richard branson and the space you could put some money here understand there is some inherent risk involved in this business here so with that from a ranking perspective 
نمبر ون آی آی پی آر نمبر ٹو ایپس نمبر تھری بی بی اے آی نمبر فور ورجن آربیٹیر سو وتھ دیٹ تھینک یو ویری مچ ہیپی انویسٹنگ اینڈ ٹریڈنگ پلیز سبسکرائب